Hello again, this is Sports Betting Whale, Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017. Thanks again for joining me on the YouTube channel. Uh, recap yesterday, we were up uh, a little over 32 units with the two two two-team parlays with Golden State and over first half and over, Golden State and over for the game, 10 units each, all coming in easy. Uh, that was probably a lot of fun for everybody, not, not too much of a sweat, but an exciting performance by Golden State sweeping out the San Antonio Spurs as expected. One of the things that um, you'll see the whale do here a lot is when there's a closeout game in a series, the um, dominant team will generally win and cover in those situations at a very, very high, high rate. So <clears throat> that's something that I've been following for a long time and yesterday set up really well with Golden State on a closeout situation. It's hard for the team down 3-0 to really muster up much of a challenge. Okay, so <clears throat> as I told you yesterday, we've got a book coming out, an autobiography of Sports Betting Well. Read to you some of it uh, yesterday, and I'm going to go ahead and continue with s some more today. <clears throat> this is a continuation of what was happening at the Mirage in the 1990s with um, my run from the thousand dollars up to millions. One of the most memorable stories that made the newspaper involved the 1995 Rose Bowl between undefeated Penn State and the Oregon Ducks. The story begins with me in a luxury suite upstairs at the Mirage with my then wife and children. I had 150,000 in sports and casino chips in the room. My children were very young at the time and did not know the value of these casino chips. They were playing with the chips and putting them down the vents, thus costing me uh, quite a bit of money. When my wife saw that what they were doing, she locked all the money and chips in the hotel safe. Uh, by the way, I never did recover those chips, so it was a, quite a nice day for whoever got them down off those vent systems. We did turn it in, but never did get the chips back. My wife at the time and I did not always get along very well, and so an argument that ensued an hour before the Colorado and Notre Dame and Penn State and Oregon games were going to kick off was very ill-timed, it appeared. I wanted to wager a very large amount of money on the games, but she refused to open the safe to give me the chips. Frustrated, I left with $500 in cash in my pocket and decided to drive home. On the way out of the casino, I went ahead and bet the $500 on one hand of blackjack. Back then, you could bet the cash and they would leave it out on the table. Nowadays, they grab the money and give you the chips. So I played the 501, let it ride, didn't take the 500 back till I was up over 10,000. I started playing 5,000 a hand on two hands, ended up with 175,000. When my host came by and asked the pit boss how much I was in for, the pit boss said nothing since I had even taken my original $500 back and put it in my pocket. With the 175,000 winnings, I went to the book and took a two-team parlay of Penn State and Colorado. Colorado was first playing uh, Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. They won easily 41-21. to 21. The next game was the Penn State-Oregon Rose Bowl for all the marbles. I was laying 17 and a half points. Penn State was an excellent team that year, a fantastic defense and very, very strong running game. I just didn't see how Oregon could hang with them. The halftime score was 14-7 to 7 Penn State, which did not make me too happy. We outscored them 14 to 7 in the third period to take a 28 to 14 lead. This is when the fun began. With 4:24 to go in the game, Penn State scored to go up by 24 points. Remember, I'm laying 17 and a half. All we needed to do was keep Oregon from scoring a touchdown and we win. We played almost no defense in that last drive for Oregon and Oregon scored a touchdown with 2:44 to go in the game and made it to make it 38-20 with an extra point pending. The Oregon place kicker was very good and rarely missed easy field, field goals, let alone extra points. And there was no way Penn State, State would even try to score again with that lead and that much time left. They would just take a knee. So all of this was for nothing. The running the $500 into 175000 and betting it all on the two-teamer, I was going to lose by a hook which has happened to me uh, many times in my life, so it wouldn't have been the first. So my brother and I were watching the game, and we see that the Oregon coach calls for his team to go for a 
two-pointer instead of kicking the extra point, we had a chance. The Oregon Q QB throws a perfect pass to his receiver, angling to the goal line, and the receiver and defender were knocked out of bounds right at the goal line. It looks to me like he made it over the line, and my brother agreed. But in the game, the players hit the ref, disallowing him from getting a good look. There was no instant replay back then. He looked around at the other refs and to no avail. He began to raise his hands for a score, but on the last second waved it off. No good. Thank God there was no instant replay. The ticket paid over $600,000. Within just hours, I had taken five hundred dollars in cash and turned it into more than $600,000. Um, I didn't say this in the book, but that $600,000 ended up being millions. So I ended up taking the $500 in cash and running it into millions in, in less than a week. That was one of the most unusual and exciting several hours in the casino I'd ever experienced. This run lasted until 1996, 1997. I had some huge wins and some cold streaks that wiped out over half my bankroll times, but I was always playing with house money. In 1997, the Mirage Sportsbook made some man management changes and I moved to Florida with my family. My sports and casino betting at the Mirage is unlikely to ever be repeated in Las Vegas again. It certainly has not happened to the best of my knowledge. That's because nowadays the sports books are afraid to let anyone run up the action on the round robin systems once they get hot. Oh, that's just another excerpt from the book, The Autobiography of a Sports Betting Whale. A lot of fun stories in there. And not only the stories, but the proof of what I'm saying. I was I included uh, the uh, article in the newspaper, Las Vegas Review Journal, on the front cover of the sports page, talking about what happened with my two-team parlay. Okay, so today we have one, two, three round robins, you know, two-teamer, and some straight plays. The first round robin, I would recommend that you take threes and a four, two units each for a total of ten. 952 over on the Cubs, 953 Colorado, 956 Atlanta, 957 over on San Diego. That's 952 over on the Cubs, 953 Colorado, 956 Atlanta, 957 over on San Diego. Next group, this one we're going to take threes and a four, three units uh, for a total of 15. That's 967 Texas run line plus one and a half, 970 Astros run line minus one and a half, 971 Seattle run line plus one and a half, 973 the Indians. That's Texas run line, Astros run line, Seattle run line, and the Indians. Third group, threes and a four, two units, total of 10. At 976 Milwaukee, 978 over on Arizona, 1506 Cavaliers in the first half, 1506 Cavaliers over in the first half. Then we'll do a two-teamer for recommended 12 units. 506 Cavaliers, 506 over on the Cavaliers. Cleveland should be quite uh, energetic and upset of, after losing that big lead in game three at home. And I expect that they won't uh, let up like they did last time. But we are taking them first half and over. So if they do let down, we still would have the first half win. So um, on the straight plays, we have the uh, NHL, we're going to take the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have the uh, 956 Atlanta Braves, 506 Cavs, and 1506 Cavs for the first half. Recommended 10 units on all four of those straight plays. Thanks again for joining me on the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll read more from the book tomorrow and look forward to having another winning day. Thanks a lot. Going forward, I'll continue to release all of my daily picks to you for free if you text me or subscribe to my mailing list. So make sure to text me or subscribe to my free mailing list so I can continue sending you all of my picks every day. I've made tens of millions of dollars betting on sports over the years and now I'm finally breaking my secret so that you too can share in my success. All you have to do is either click on the link in the description of this video or send me a text message to my phone number at 702-462-1135. If you're texting me from outside the United States, add the plus one, so it's plus one, 702-462-1135. I will begin texting and emailing you with all of my daily picks whenever they come up. Remember, subscribing to my mailing list is 100% free, no strings attached. And every day that you're not a subscriber to my free mailing list is another day that you may have missed out on one of my devastating winning runs. 
So be sure to click on the link in the description of this video or send me a text at 702-462-1135 or if you're outside of the United States, plus one, 702-462-1135 to join my mailing list today, 100% free. And you'll be the first to know when I release my killer picks every single day. Again, 100% free.